G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. In 2021 I made a video discussing some issues that War Thunder has that should be addressed in 2021. These ranged from fairly trivial to quite frustrating and things that would definitely affect the player attention. Whilst Gaijin didn't really pay much attention to these issues, you guys really enjoyed the video and thank you so much for supporting it. So we're going to be doing it again. Again, these issues range from fairly trivial to things that will affect player attention, and for me, player retention is one of the most important things for this game, simply because it's what keeps the game alive. I have a personally huge investment in War Thunder, emotionally and with a YouTube channel, so for me it's in my best interest to make sure that War Thunder does the best that it can by its players, and so this involves videos like these. So without further ado, let's get to our first issue. Our first and probably biggest issue today is Gaijin's stingy attitude towards its player base. This is best exemplified with the Play for Peace registration link drama, in which a registration link could have doubled as a little bonus where you could have gotten the same little gifts as a new player, by logging into your Gaijin account, claiming 7 days of premium and some small other bonuses. Gaijin closed the loophole and then proceeded to remove these tiny little bonuses off these new players. For me, this is just ridiculous. These types of bonuses would have only had a value of around $5 or $10 at the very, very most, and the fact that Gaijin is willing to take $10 off pretty much anyone is just frustrating as. The fact that they would do that retrospectively as well is even more annoying because the fact that they're doing this means that they're just happy to take whatever the hell they want. Now, this isn't the first time that Gaijin has taken things from the player base. There was a drop event with Esports Ready, which was very hyped up by a couple of content creators, including myself, where you could have gotten the tricolor smoke from a drop, and Gaijin removed it only to sell it on their dev server a couple of weeks later. In fact, that change didn't even make it to the live server, but they took the drops away so that they could sell them later. For me, this type of attitude really just adds to the pain of the average War Thunder player. If Gaijin was willing to give more things for free, or at least let a couple of things slide, then most of the time people would be a little bit more happy with the game. However, when their wrench is being tightened every single day, so hard, in every single front, people are more likely to get pissed off, people are more likely to leave, and people are more likely to criticise the smaller things about Gaijin. If you're generous, people will tend to let things slide a little bit more, and Gaijin still hasn't understood this, even though they've had this game for about 10 years. For me, even when I'm doing things in my everyday life and I mess up, tending to give someone a little trinket is actually a good way to get them on your good books. And so doing that sort of thing is a beneficial thing to do when you're in a customer and uh, supplier relationship. But like I've said, Gaijin doesn't seem to get it. And this type of attitude where no, I'm gonna take things away and I don't care, really drives a wrench between the player and the developer. Look at other games, you can see that games like RuneScape or Rainbow Six Siege or hell even Raid Shadow Legends gives you free stuff for Christmas. And Gaijin? They give you an event to grind. Our next issue is a little bit more lighthearted and is to do with computer hardware. As time goes by, computer hardware tends to get better, and at this time we tend to have a lot more 4, 6 and 8 core CPUs running around in the general space than we did maybe 5 years ago. These types of CPUs are much better at supporting multi-threaded workloads, uh, such as rendering, but also tend to be a bit more utilised in modern titles. Now, War Thunder is an 8 year old title on a fairly old engine, and could therefore be used with some updating. Updating this would allow it to use more than one thread, which is currently all it does now, and would therefore be able to spread the workload over more cores, making it a little bit more efficient. You could also use that extra space to increase quality of textures, physics, things like that that require large amounts of CPU power. This extra performance boost would give War Thunder an extra graphical appearance and would continue the graphical appeal for many years to come. War Thunder's currently 8 year old, or 9 year old engine rather, is kind of struggling to look as good as other titles such as World of Tanks, which in my opinion look a lot better. Textures are another big thing that could be addressed, such as the texture of trees, water, clouds and mountains. These types of textures could really use a little bit of a boost because they are quite 
pixelated and a little bit dated at the moment. So having some extra textures, having some extra cores to use, and maybe having some other things like real-time ray tracing and uh, more modern DLSS would be a wonderful support for this game. It would really propel this game sort of into the next level. Our next issue is the constant increase in repair cost. Repair costs have been a fairly hot topic in War Thunder for a few years now, and they've been steadily increasing over time, and they've been getting to certain ridiculous spots where they price a plane out of the market quite quickly, where other methods might be a little bit better. A best uh, example of this is the Sagittario 2. Now, when it was introduced, it was battle rating 8.0. It was incredibly strong, and it did extremely well. And it got moved to 8.7, and then got slapped with a 20,000 silver line repair cost. This type of double balancing shouldn't be a thing. This type of using this repair cost to price a plane out of the market is a tactic that Gaijin has used for a fairly long time. And whilst that is a fairly effective way of doing things, it should be capped at about 25,000 silver lions at the absolute limit. And as a result, the other planes should be a bit lower. I would say that the average repair cost should be shrunk by about 10 or 25%. And for me, that would be a reasonable balance between fair and still requiring you to play your plane quite reasonably. On top of that, it would also maintain it as a balancing tool. So someone with a 15,000 silver line repair cost might still be a bit more hesitant to play the plane and therefore might make it a little bit less frequent in the matchmaker. On the flip side, a lot of the time, these tools are used incorrectly. The Sagittario, again, stands out as a good example where the Sagittario was being spammed because it was a new plane and because it was quite powerful. And so in order to reduce its numbers, Gaijin had decided to increase the repair costs as part of its balancing scheme. For me, this just makes no sense. And this just demonstrates a 2D approach to Gaijin's balancing, which sort of flows on to the increasing repair costs. Using repair costs as a balancing tool is fine, but it has to be done in conjunction with the others and not parallel to it. These two need to inter interlace and therefore they should be used correctly when they are interlaced. When they're not interlaced, then they'll be shit and everyone will cry because that's exactly what's happening right now. So if Gaijin could style it back a little bit, just a little bit, and then use these in conjunction with the battle rating changes, then we would be in a lot better spot. Our next issue is the addition of higher ranks to War Thunder with fewer options for free to players to earn premiums. For this, I'm specifically talking about the Warbond Shop and its limitation to Tier 3 ships, planes, and tanks. These th Tier 3s mean that players are less likely to be able to have an effective grinder all the way up to rank 7. We are at rank 7 now, we're no longer at rank 5, and the Warbond Shop has not increased a single tier. For me, I would like to see rank 4s and maybe rank 5s added to the tech trees that are premiums only earnable through war bonds or golden eagles and so if people want to buy a rank 5 premium they can just put golden eagles or they can grind through the war bond shop which would have to be increased of course but i think that that is a fairly well rounded solution for gaijin they would be interested in keeping the extra players and having a more filled out matchmaker by people completing tasks to earn these war bonds to purchase these vehicles and of course once they have done that, the player then benefits from having access to perhaps a rank 5 premium or alternatively another tech tree once they've completed their AAA title apparently worth of a tech tree. For this, Gaijin would have to increase that little bit of grind, but for me, I believe that that is fine. That is something that players will absolutely lap up and something that you and I will actually enjoy. These planes don't even have to be unique premium vehicles. They don't have to be the F-89B. They don't have to be well researched or they don't have to be specialized they can just be copy paste vehicles of vehicles that already exist in the tech tree a good example are the tier 2 premiums that you can buy with starter packs like the uh, Heinkel 112 or the I can't remember the guy's name but there's a KI-44 KI in the Japanese tech tree or the Spitfire Venture 2 or you name it these types of vehicles could go in the war bond shop but they could be someone's P-80A, or they could be someone's MiG-9 late, or certain pilots G-91, or you name it. It could be any famous ace from the Korean War, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that the average player is able to get their hands on these planes by putting time into the game 
and therefore benefiting Gaijin in the form of an inflated player base. These types of solutions work. They are a two-way solution. Someone gets a benefit and someone else gets a benefit. And for me, I don't understand why Gaijin aren't adding these types of things. They could, like I've said already, increase the grind for this. They could make it very difficult. They could make it something that you would have to do fairly frequently, but it would be free to play. And it would therefore give the player base an opportunity to break into other tech trees. It would give them the opportunity to be competitive in multiple nations. And for me, that's the important thing. Our next issue revolves around balancing of event and premium planes. Now, I don't necessarily mean these types of planes themselves as in their battle ratings or repair costs, but I'm specifically referring to the matchmakers that they exist in, especially around top tier. I want to draw your attention to the F5C and the F4F early when they were first introduced. They both heavily affected the matchmaker that they were introduced into by swinging the battle heavily against them. Generally, most of these players were either very inexperienced or were unfamiliar with top tier, and so they were unable to deal with the threats. So that resulted in their team's win rates plummeting quite significantly, and therefore Gaijin balancing these accordingly according to this particular matchmaker. The next patch rolled around and there was none of it to be seen, and so these particular vehicles are now either at a lower battle rating than they should be, or, you know, just a top tier premium again. These types of things should not be happening, and Gaijin should be taking this into consideration. These types of plans should not be included in the matchmaking of the vehicles. If you find a vehicle that is polluting a matchmaker to the point where it is lowering the win rate so much, then that data should be discarded. In fact, this type of data would not be reliable because it is not reflective of the matchmaker that would exist within two weeks time after this event when everyone puts the premium away because they're getting clubbed. Our next issue is the balancing of Airfield AAA. Airfield AAA has been a hot topic since pretty much the game's inception and I've actually made a video on Airfield AAA. But in 2021, it was given a little bit of an upgrade. We got surface-to-air missiles guarding most of the airfields at rank 5 and rank 6. And you might think that this is a fairly good thing because that would mean that the airfields are a little bit more well protected. And whilst that's true, Airfield AAA is still heavily unreliable. There are certain times where you'll be flying over your Airfield AAA and nothing will happen. And other times you'll go close to an enemy and the AAA will absolutely ruin you. Having that reliability factor where you know something is going to happen after a certain amount of time is the key factor in sort of making ARB's Airfield AA a good thing to deal with. Having a timer where someone who is in dire need of repair can go land, repair, rearm, and maybe get some altitude, and after that timer expires, the airfield would turn off, you would have a fairly balanced situation because then you would have both opportunities to play the game fairly, repair and rearm, and then you would diminish the opportunities for opponents to abuse the airfield AA. Of course, I go into more detail in my video on airfield AAA, and so I'd like you guys to take a look at that for a little bit more detail, but I think that this hasn't actually solved the problem, the addition of surface-to-air missiles. It's just made the problem different. In fact, it's kind of actually made it the same, just with a little bit more range and with a missile instead of a bullet. To me, this is just the classic Gaijin throwing issues under the rug and changing it to something all new and shiny instead of actually looking at the substance and dealing with the issue properly. Our next issue pertains specifically to the ARB EC style maps, those 128 by 128 maps that were recently added in the latest patch. These maps aren't necessarily a bad thing in themselves, I just think they need a little bit of work to them. In this particular game mode, it is a one spawn game mode and you have certain tasks to complete. These tasks spawn in randomly and for me, I think that that is a really, really good thing. On top of that, these maps are wide, open, and 128 by 128 kilometers, meaning that you have plenty of opportunities to find some 1v1s or stretch your legs as a fast plane. And this is excellent. However, I think there are a couple of things that need to be addressed. The first one is the constant ability for planes to end up in a dog pile. You'll always find that after about five minutes of flying around, you'll end up with a little cluster ball somewhere in the middle of the map. And this is a tendency for most matches 
where you find that these types of things will happen often. But on the smaller maps, you'll tend to find that it is a little bit more widespread throughout the map. And that's because of the spotting distance. Now, I have harped on about the spotting distance for a long time. And I think it's in an, an okay position. But what I think for these larger maps is the hand-holding method of that spotting system where you spot objects from a lot further away is better for gameplay in the sense that you will end up with fewer furballs. If I see an enemy aircraft, I'm more likely to head towards it instead of sitting on the periphery waiting for the match to end. If the enemy is doing the same thing, then we're going to end up with a furball pretty quickly and it's just going to be like Korea, but on a little spot of a 128 by 128 map. And if you get damaged or you run out of fuel, you're just not getting back, period. So for me, having this extra spotting distance allows planes to play a little bit more dynamically. And you might say, well, what about the radar? And that's all good and well until someone comes in from behind you or from a dead spot in your radar. Or alternatively, if you don't have pulse Doppler radar like the F4E or the MiG-21 BIS, then you're a bit shit out of luck, and for me, that's a little bit unfair to those planes. So having that extra spotting distance for these larger maps, say 20 kilometers, just to be generous, it could be less, it could be something else. Do you, you guys let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. But I think increasing the spotting distance is a really, really good start. I would also like to see these matches last a little bit longer. If these lasted a little bit longer, then I think we would have a lot more of an opportunity to do more things. Instead of being held down by that half an hour timer, it should be an hour at the very, very least. And even so, as a final point, I think that these should be a separate game mode to themselves. I think these EC style matches should be a permanent fixture in the game, but they should be a separate game mode with their own multi-respawn mode similar to the way sim ec works currently except without a spawn cost because that that just doesn't make sense at all to me having a spawn cost sounds absolutely ludicrous when you pair that with a repair cost so having that is as a permanent fixture in the game gives planes like bombers a much better chance at doing things in the game but even so having it in as a sort of temporary fixture along with air rb is an excellent start it does give things like bombers an extra chance and for me, seeing it as a start is a good thing, but I would really love Gaijin to take this to the next level. Our next issue is Helicopter EC. Heli EC is a bit of a joke at this point, with it being so damn compressed that an AH-1G can face a KA-52. For me, this is just not balanced. In fact, this is just boring and shit. So what Gaijin basically needs to do here is decompress the battle ratings. What they need to do is take that battle rating range and instead of throwing every helicopter into the same lobby, each helicopter needs to be separated by their tier or by their battle rating and therefore make a more balanced matchmaker. You would have AH-1Gs fighting things like MI-4s or AH-1Fs or Hueys. You would have things like the AH-1Z facing off then against things like the KA-52s. For me, this is a much more balanced matchmaker and is something a little bit more appropriate to grinding out helicopters. Helicopters are already a fairly expensive and fairly uh, time-consuming endeavor, and for this, this would hopefully make that a lot better, because at the moment, it is not in a good spot at all. Our next issue is missile power creep. Have you guys noticed that you're seeing a lot more Matra Magics, AIM-9Ps, AIM-7s, and even R-60s down at the lower battle ratings of jets? Rank 6 is now being polluted with these missiles, and that's because planes are going down to that battle rating that have poorer and poorer performance. And so Gaijin is using these missiles to make up that performance in order to balance out the stats. This is a pretty piss poor way of doing things because you end up with a high frustration factor. The AC-38 might be a terrible plane, but you can guarantee that you'll get about two kills because the enemies are not gonna be able to do anything when they've got an R60 behind them and no flares or speed to run away from it because that's as fast as they go. These types of planes should not be fighting planes that are so slow or don't have countermeasures at all. And for me, the AC-38s, the AC-38M and the A5C are the main culprits here. The AV-8 also follows in with 240 flares and two AIM-9Gs, but it's less of an issue and a little bit more of a frustration factor. This general missile power creep also means that those lower battle rating planes that previously could rely on previous tactics are getting very, very outdated even at their own battle ratings. Things like the AIM-9Bs creeping down to battle ratings of 7.0 have been happening for a little bit, but 
that's not as much of an issue because the AIM-9B is not quite as strong. Things like R60s, however, are absolutely unacceptable to be as low as 8.3 because you could be in something like a Cougar or a MiG-15 non-BIS and come up against an R60 and you would just get completely ruined. And for me, and for anyone else who's playing at this tier, that is the definition of not having fun. Our next issue is Gaijin's top-down method of balancing their battle ratings. What I specifically mean by this is when they see a plane that is performing poorly, they are more likely to lower it in battle rating than they are to increase or to look around at the battle rating, understand why the plane is performing poorly, and either increase the battle ratings or just accept that that plane is going to be a poor performer. The F-4C is an excellent example of this because it is one of those planes that didn't have any countermeasures and was constantly going up against things that had R-60 missiles, AIM-9Js, AIM-9Ps or just excessive performance over these planes. It had bad statistics and Gaijin decided to put it down. When it went down to 10.0 it did extremely well and to be honest does a little bit too well putting a lot of planes out of that high altitude matchmaker forcing them to mow the lawn where they're going to be swept up by things that are much faster. This type of method tends to kill a lot of battle ratings. You don't see many planes in the 9.0 era because they're just not worth playing anymore. Gaijin has done it with too many planes and now they pretty much rule the roost, only for the next group of planes to eventually be put down and what this does over time is it compresses the matchmaker. If you think about before supersonic jets, this was almost five years ago now, we have a fairly more compressed matchmaker than what we started with. The F9F-8 was 9.0, the MiG-15 BIS was also 9.0. These planes are now 8.7, some of them even 8.3, the non-BIS and the A5 Sabre. Whilst these are more fitting battle ratings of course, this demonstrates that this top-down approach has slowly left its indelible mark on the matchmaker, and it will pretty much never recover or never bounce back from this. This is pretty upsetting because I really really enjoy jets, and as someone who covers jets mostly on the channel, it is of course in my best interest for jets to be as balanced as possible. Having a wide variety of planes that are all fairly competitive is extremely satisfying for a matchmaker and of course that's what Gaijin intends to do with their matchmaker. I believe they've just gone about it the wrong way. Personally what I believe that they need to do is have a look at certain planes and accept that they are going to be food. Things that are constantly in that bracket of doom. The 11.3s which are dominating will cause a bracket of doom for 10.3s. Let's just, let's just say that and 10.7 will also be in a little bit of a bad spot as well because they're constantly being up-tiered. This is the type of battle rating that I believe Gaijin just has to accept will be subpar because there, are, there is no one to up-tier the 11.3s. The 10.3s will end up being the ones that get up-tiered all the time because something's got to fill that matchmaker in the space underneath them and quantitative matchmaking does a fair amount to fix that which is excellent but I think that if Gaijin does this bottom up instead and also accepts that some vehicles are just going to be food for the time being until they leave that bracket of death, then I think we are going to be in a much better spot. Our final issue today is the grind for crew points. Crew points affect everything in War Thunder, from your pilot's G-tolerance to the survivability of your gunners, to the spread of your guns and rockets, to the time that you can repair your plane, tank or ship. These are such critical elements of your everyday War Thunder gameplay, and they should not be held behind a paywall. They shouldn't even be this difficult to grind. For me, who's played several thousand hours of War Thunder, I actually don't have a single crew that I've maxed out by not paying Golden Eagles for. And that's only because I'm a content creator. For those of you that are not as lucky as myself, or are playing free to play, you have to fork out money, or spend exorbitant amounts of time on each crew and you could have up to 5, 8, 10, 20 crews that all need training in planes, tanks, ships and helicopters. For me, this is just something that shouldn't exist or should at least be heavily reduced in any way possible. For me, I genuinely don't understand how this is a good feature apart from it being a simple cash grab. To be honest, it needs to be scrapped but Gadget is not going to do that so I would at least advocate for it to be reduced in some way.
So ladies and gents, these are the issues that I believe that Gaijin should address in 2022. These are the issues, in my opinion, that are the most important for the game overall. I'm sure there are plenty of other issues that should be covered, should be addressed in some way, and you guys can let me know about those in the comment section below. If you would like to support the channel, check out all the links in the description below, but you know, a like and a subscription and a comment would be plenty from all of you. Thank you so much for watching, I sincerely appreciate your time, and I'm looking forward to bring out some more videos in 2022. Thank you all for watching, take care, and I'll catch you next time.